Our sun, the center of the solar system, is the source of all life and rules over every aspect of our existence, forming our human concept of time from the three distinct points of the sunrise, high noon, and sunset of each day, to the divisions of the four seasons, which coincide with the pairs of intertwining equinoxes and solstices, to the annual 365 cycle of days, of which 2,160 annual cycles make one sign age along the 25,765-year precession, which is tracked by the path of the sun along the vernal equinoxes. This timeless importance of the sun across all time and all cultures is evidenced through the infinite prehistorical ancient and modern temples, pyramids, and monuments consecrated in the paramount significance of the sun, along with countless sun-based rituals, sacrifices, and celebrations like those centered around the orbit of the vernal equinox, like Easter, and the winter solstice, like Christmas, which occurs in Capricorn, celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ, and aligns with the winter solstice, and similarly was marked and celebrated by the ancients with Saturnalia. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and symbolized by the goat fish, the goat evil, and the ego, while the fish, good, and divinity, which is a universal inheritance. To the ancients, Saturnalia celebrates the conquest of good over evil, yet not in the demolishing of one for the supremacy of the other, because Saturn is the goat fish, not the goat and or fish. He is the harmonized unity of opposites, the harmonization of contradictions, and the unity of the human ego and divine godliness both present in full and equal measure in the person. The harmonized unity of this duality was called Christ Consciousness, which to the Greeks was called Christos, which came from the same Sanskrit word Chris, which means sacred, as the Hindu Krishna, and both Jesus Christ and the Hindu Krishna are represented by the fish, and both of whose devotees are called Christians. The conquest of good over evil is represented by a crucifix, or cross officius, which is the sign of Pisces, and the constellation attributed both to Christ and Krishna, all of which is knowledge symbolic of the human desire to understand the power of the sun because of his central and timeless significance to every aspect of our life, evidenced in everything from timekeeping to farming, trade, and commerce the seasons, and whose sunspots and huge solar flares affect electronics on Earth. As much as personal seasonal mood swings, the sun is the very reason we have structure in our life with calendars, down to even our birth date and birth second, which the sun marks not only with a timestamp and our place on Earth, but as above, so below. Well, so too, as below, so above. The sun also matches your birthplace on earth to its celestial counterpart, pinpointing your birthplace in the heavenly expanse, which itself is codified, like time, by the zodiac, sidereal, and Vedic astrology, which to the ancients was no different from astronomy. And if that were still the case, and our modern astrologers stayed true to the art of star map reading, then they would consult not their astrology ephemerides, but the one and same star trackers used by today's most eminent astronomers. Why then does the sun pass Capricorn not upon the winter solstice in December, but from January 20th through February 15th, making this the true period of Christmas time, or better yet, Saturnalia? Furthermore, the sun passes through Pisces March 20th through April 18th, the springtime, the seasonal resurrection after the crucifixion, or cross officious, coinciding with the vernal equinox of spring, and thus, Pisces is the true vernal sign of the equinox, not Aries, as Pisces appropriately represents resurrection, and makes clear logical sense for Easter time celebration as it too marks the resurrection. And Pisces marks the end of the federal fiscal year, 
as taxes are due on the last day of astronomical sun in Pisces, followed by the Ram, who appropriately marks the new restart of the year on April 19th, thus fitting in perfectly to the significance of the month in which it occurs, April, which comes from the word Abril, meaning to open. And, as the procession of the ages is defined by the sign in which the sun rises in the east on the dawn of the vernal equinox of March 20th, we are deep in the middle of the age of Pisces and quantifiably 600 years away from even entering the age of Aquarius, which will occur eventually around 2600 CE. Yet, something important does happen upon January 20th in the United States every four years. You got it. The inauguration of the new president of the United States, the prime head of the rule of law, the head of the corporation, the decider, and executive, which are the very definition of the characters of Capricorns and their ruler, Saturn. The Freemason founders and executives who run the American government are clearly following the true astronomical star trackings as evidenced by every important federal date from taxes being due to the IRS when the RAM appropriately marks the start of a new fiscal year to when elections are held on November 4th in the sign of the scales of justice, Libra, the sign that presides over justice and rituals relating to the body politic. And, for the last 2,000 years, the sun's symbolic death upon the shortest day of the year, marked by the winter solstice, has been taking place in the sign of Sagittarius. Yet, the symbolism and true meaning of Christmas, of Christ consciousness, remains as unchanged and universal as ever. For the battle between good and evil, and the struggle to unite the human ego with the divine godliness, remains as persistent as ever. And what we call Christmas and Saturnalia, Christ and Krishna consciousness, are metaphors and manuals for the activation of Christ consciousness within oneself. As mentioned, Christmas occurs in Capricorn, which now begins on January 20th, and is ruled by the goatfish, Saturn, who dispenses gifts as rewards as his Santa avatar, or coal, as punishment, and his Satan avatar. He also rules over the first red root chakra, which nurtures the inner fire, and thus is called the fireplace. It is associated with the sexual organs, and through sexual innuendo became the chestnuts roasting on an open fire. But, the fire is first sparked by Mars, who is the ruler of the good, godly fish essence. Fire that is wielded for war or diplomacy, for hate or live and let live. This Mars ruled God essence is only consciously broken out of your original seed of life from insemination prior to mitosis. The Mars essence must climb up to the first chakra, igniting the fire in the fireplace to roast the chestnuts, and then upwards to the second chakra of the water element, symbolized by the moon as a silver crescent moon, and is associated with the sacral region called the golden womb in both women and men, also called the cosmic egg, the virgin goddess. Sound familiar? This is the true origin of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the golden womb that nurtures the fiery God essence to birth and give light to it. The light, which is the fire element of the third solar plexus chakra that emerges after being gestated and baptized in the womb. This is not Mary of Magdala or Mary the mother of Jesus Christ, but simply the meaning of the second Svaristana Chakra, then onwards to the third Fire Solar Plexus Chakra, where the light shines in order to be bright, not burn, thus being a light for others. Then onwards to the fourth, and so on, activating each one with the fiery Mars essence, which can only be done and tamed with love of self and others. And 
As it does so, releases the smoke from the incinerated old energies, thoughts, and emotions associated with each chakra. The fiery Mars essence crawls like this, or swims, all along the spine, incinerating and releasing old smoke like a chimney until it arrives at the third eye, where it engorges the good godfish essence into the pineal gland, blending the spinal Mars godfish fluid with the pineal gland, forcing it to burst open like a pine cone, once closed, but now alive and open, and transforming it from a calcified pea to a crystalline emerald, iridescent and shiny like a Christmas tree. The secreted fish oil from the pineal gland, called by the Greeks Jesus Christos or the Jesus Christ, can only be generated if the fiery Mars essence is consciously awakened in the first place. If you activate your pineal gland, you are rewarded with this divine fish oil Jesus Christ fluid, which now begins to flow through the claustrum of the brain like a holy gift, which is where we get the claws in Santa Claus. If the pineal gland is not activated, the fire is never ignited in the fireplace, and all one gets or becomes is a lump of coal. But if activated, the oil flows back down the chimney of the spine to revisit every chakra, dissolving with its infallible divine truth the status quo of social lies and the sterilizing paradigms of religious retardation, dissolving all the spiritual, mental, and psychological conditionings aimed to make one blind deaf and dumb to truth, but worst of all, their inner truth, like a snake's venom to a body's muscles. The reason Christians fear the serpent, and why Jesus Christ's favorite and often repeated saying was, Be ye wise as serpents, for the serpent's venom is akin to salvation, for the one who tames and attains it, but the literal damnation of the Christian faith, which is no faith, but all a lie, thus, incompatible with the lie-dissolving truth venom represented by the serpent oil of Jesus Christ, making the Christian Savior Jesus Christ a true snake oil salesman, but emphasis on the truth, thus emboldening you to be fearless, out, loud, and proud, and where, at the fourth green heart Anahata Chakra, which is in the middle between three above and three below, but also, as the heart extends to the arms, also the right and left, and the front and back. From the front, one sees a cross with the rose in the middle, which form the center of the Rosicrucian belief. From the side, there is a fire that extends from the chest, and as the brain, heart, and body entirely function on electricity, and all their currents meet at the central electromagnetic power plant of the heart, known to be electrically stronger and more saturated with the same neurons present in the brain. An arch of pulsing energy waves protrudes from the back like a fish's dorsal fin, or better yet, the more intelligent and mythical dolphin, which was Jesus Christ's original appellation, Jesus le Dauphin, Jesus the Dolphin, and the reason we call the spinal region behind the heart, the dorsal. This is all unlocked through the conscious power of love. And true consciousness is not defined by knowledge, facts, or wisdom, learned from books, schools, society, or laws, rules, and sins you were made to memorize, live by, and impose on others which tell you how to be. True consciousness is based on first-hand lived experiences that form the basis of your personal independent intellect and your power for critical self-thought based on who you are, not how others tell you to be. Thinking for yourself and learning from your life gives you courage and freedom, while living by someone else's way of thinking and the knowledge that is true for them breeds in oneself fear and loathing. 
one can only break the original seed of life with fearless courage, like a seedling confronts the tough earth and rocks to bloom into the mighty oak, or stay forever confined in the protective shell of society's easily burstable bubble of lies. Love of Self Love yourself, which can only be done if you accept your nature, because nature is your divine inheritance, while ego is nurtured by society. Society loves to define and labelize this nature in order to regulate and demonize. While your nature is your divine inheritance and when bloomed and blossomed is a very revelation of God's truth, one is false, the other truth, and the true truth is always going to be radical, taboo, and by the very force of its godly nature can not be confined, especially by anything dealing with society because society wants to condition the truth out of you with all its demonizing lies. Because it's easier to control a herd of heteronormative, spiritually retarded, and cognitively sterilized Christian thugs than shepherds legitimately born again. Because not only is Christmas a retelling of pineal gland activation, but its activation is also called the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is possible for you, right here, right now, but only if you follow the secret, hidden true teaching of the Jesus Christ, which was the topic of the real and world-renowned person who desired to establish schools of this teaching, not religions of malicious, predatory, occulting priesthoods, as outlined in his Magia Jesu Christi, which was his codex containing all this knowledge known as serpent science. That's right. The true meaning of Christmas, that is to say, the true knowledge of the conservative Christian Christmas agenda is the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge, and Jesus Christ ate from it, and wanted you, and all of us, to eat from it. And you shouldn't fight this, because the heart and blood of the pagan serpent knowledge already flows through you, you just didn't know it. Because all Christians are pagans, but not all pagans are stupid. I mean, dumb. I'm, you get the idea. And if there ever were a time to celebrate and put to practice this knowledge of the lie dissolving truth venom of the serpent of Jesus Christ, it would be as the ancients did with Saturnalia and upon its astronomical commencement, January 20th. And for almost all of us, the first light dissolved in the truth venom of the divine serpent would be the sign you think you are, giving way to the sign you truly are. And until next time, trust and believe that it is okay to be you, the most beautiful you, there ever was, there is, and that there ever will be, because you are not a story that can be told twice. And there will never again be a stage for you to perform but this one, right here, right now. So be you, the most beautiful you.